Okay, so now we have a bag in the shape of the net, um, but we don't have the net qualities yet. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is a very easy way, but doesn't look as good, uh, but could be used for animation. Uh, that's using a texture of a grid that looks sort of like a net. And then the second method will be duplicating all of these polygon edges and turning them into curves that Arnold can render and looks more physically like a net. But the limitation is it would be difficult to animate. Um, so we can consider that would be better for, you know, modeling something for a still image. It's probably a way to animate it, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so let's just get started with this. We're going to assign a new material to this bag here. doesn't really matter what it is, but we'll just use the AI standard surface. And what we want to do is to... Um, put a texture on the transmission weight to make parts of it see-through and parts of it opaque. And the easiest one to use for this, I think, would be uh, a grid. So under 2D textures, we have a grid here. Now we can't see anything and I'm going to hit 6 on my keyboard. So now you can see that um, white means it's transmissible, black means it's non-transmissive, so it's opaque. So this is inverted from what we want. So in the grid node under color balance, nope, under effects, we can just click on invert. We can actually just reverse the colors here too if we want. Um, and now we have it sort of acting the way that we want. So probably not enough divisions yet. So if we, it's probably easier to see if we open up the hypershade map this out so you can see we have this grid node going into transmission here then going into the grid node is this place 2d texture node and what this allows us to do is change the number of divisions in the grid essentially by repeating the uv so if i change this to 16 by 16 you can see we get a lot more grid divisions and we could increase this to 32 by 32 if we really want a lot so this kind of procedural method for creating something like this adds a lot of flexibility for experimentation. And so you can see now it looks kind of like a mesh. Um, I mean a mesh in the a net. It looks like a net. Um, so now if we render this, so let's select this and just change the diffuse color. Let's name this. So net shader. Change the color from white to let's just change it to red so we can see it a little more clearly. But you can see that even though it made it um, opaque just in these areas here, and it made it transparent um, between those lines, it's actually still treating it like a thick object, like a filled object. So there are a couple of ways we can solve that, and maybe using both. So right now, Specular is got an IOR index of refraction set to 1.5. If we change that to 1, then it sort of mostly solves this problem, and maybe entirely solves. Um, but the other thing you can do too is if you go down a little lower in the shader to geometry, you can turn on thin walled. With thin walled turned on, if I turn up index of refraction to 1.5 again, so now it's treating it sort of like a plastic bag. So it's thin walled, but it's still got some thickness here. So I don't think that's what we want because you can see that it's sort of blurring out the background here. If we turn down the roughness in the specular, then it's not blurring out the background anymore. But there's another thing we can do, right? So there's a bunch of stuff going on. So let me just go back. So we can turn the index of refraction in specular to zero and it will get rid of the refractiveness inside but then we don't really have a specular we may not want one so that could be a good solution right there um, we also turned on thin walled so thin walled allowed us to still have a high index of refraction so we can still see um, specular on the surface but then i turned down specular roughness it was that point two and you can see it's sort of blurring out the stuff in the background like you're looking through a plastic bag with kind of a rough surface. But if I turn that to zero, then we can see through. So there's one issue still remaining. 
We've got this big specular on the surface, but it shouldn't be on these transparent areas. We may want a specular that is on, if this, let's imagine this is a big plastic net uh, rather than made of ropes, and this would work perfectly for something like that. But we don't want specularity on these transparent parts, so we've got to correct that. So to do that, we can go into the hypershade and we can use the same grid and run it into the specular weight here. So if, where it's black, there will be no specular, and where it's white, there will be specular. The problem is that most of our grid is white right now. So we want to reverse that. So we could duplicate the grid and reverse it, but a better way to do it is to add a reverse node. So I just hit tab, start typing reverse, and then we can take the out alpha, because we just want the black and white values, and put it to the input here, and the output here can go to specular. And since out alpha is just a single channel, we're going to run from out alpha to input x, single channel. Input is a three channel. Output x then will go to specular. Now you can see it's behaving just the way we want. Um, the specularity only appears on the parts that are opaque and not on the transparent parts. And one of the benefits of using the same grid and just running it through a different node is now if we want to change the number of grid divisions by going to the place 2D texture node, and let's say change this to 16, 16, it updates both and it still works. I like this red color. So something like that. So you can see it's working nicely. I don't think I see any errors anywhere. Yep, the specular is just on the surface. And we can still go in and change the specular. But if we roughen the specular, you can still see that it will make it cloudy inside there. So we can turn that down. If we turn index of refraction to one, then it gets rid of the specular. So you got to balance these things out however you want it to look. Okay, so that is one way of creating a mesh or a net-like looking object, this time using a texture. It's perfectly flat though, so there's no real dimensionality to this. So we're going to look at another way of doing this. That's really much more tedious and limiting in terms of what you can do with it, of updating it or um, making a change to the number of divisions and so on. And we're going to do that by turning this into a bunch of curves. So let me just add a new material onto this. And I'm only doing this uh, so it's easier to see. So just add that Lambert. So we just got rid of that shader. It's still here, but we can go back because we're not ever going to render out this bag in the second method. Instead, we're going to duplicate all these curves and render the curves. In Arnold, you can render curves, and there's some convenient tools for making that easy. So to turn the um, edges into curves, you just right click and go to edge. Double click on one, it will select the whole edge path as far as it can follow. And then we go to modify, convert, polygon edges to curves. Right, and then we get curve there. And then we just have to go through and keep doing it. So I can double click on that one and you hit G and do it again. Now you may wonder, couldn't I just select all of them at once? And unfortunately, it will only do two selections. So if I've got four selected, hit G to run the same command again. You can just see it does the last two in the selection. So unfortunately, we have to do this more gradually. So I'll pause the video in a second and I'll do all of these. But just so you know, I'm also going to do these ones, uh, the kind of latitude ones. So G, then we'll get that one. So we'll get all of these. Okay, I'm done. That's took about five minutes. You can see that I've just duplicated all of those edge loops into curves. So we have um, a representation of that shape just made with curves. So a couple of things to consider here. 
But what's more important is to now select all of these curves and go to Arnold Curve Collector. So what's a curve collector? Curve collector is like a group for curves with extra benefits. So if we open this up in the attribute editor, or if we look at it in the outline, you can see all of those curves are just inside this group. But the top level of this, the curve collector itself, has qualities that can be shared by all the curves within it. So for example, we want to make these renderable. And by default, they will be now that they're in a curve collector. And we can change the mode from ribbon to thick. And we can change the width from 0.01 .01 to say 0.1. And let's just render it and see. That's the old one, right? So now you can see that it's actually rendering those curves as objects. So there is a width profile here. So you, know, you can use this to make them vary in thickness. You can also add a shader here. So if we just click on the checkerboard there, we can add one of our normal Arnold shaders. You would also try with the AI standard hair if you want. It can maybe give you, since these are thin, long objects like hair, that might give you some effect that you want. But I'll just use a standard surface and I'll use a preset. I don't know, like plastic. Right, and so we can get something like this. Maybe just turn down the blue color a little bit. So plastic has subsurface scattering built in, uh, which might not be necessary for something like this. Go to rubber and yeah, make it darker color. So you can play around with this, but you can see you can apply it to all of these objects at the same time. And it has a nice look. So there you go. We have the, the net made in two ways. And we're going to come back in the next one and actually fill it with an object. Thanks.